The following views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect the official position of the participants. Sides of the debate have been assigned randomly in order to create conflict, comedy, awkwardness, and embarrassment. Any resemblance between their true feelings coinciding with the side of the debate that has been dealt to them is purely coincidental. What, what can we agree on about both of them off the bat? They're both hot. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do the new, uh, the new uh, topic. We're going to talk about um, Fiona Volpe, played by Luciana Paluzzi. I like how you say it. And Fatima Blush, yes. played by uh, Barbara Carrara, I think. Right. And um, what do these two women have in common? Right. So they're they're both uh, a clear femme fatale in like a fundable in fundable and in never say never again which is the remake to fundable so in the mcclory movies you could say and um clearly fatima blush or fatima blush is is like the rebooted viona volpe we're gonna debate today which of these two chicks is the best basically <laughs> <laughs> Between Never Say Never Again and Thunderball, which which movie do you prefer? Just out Thunderball. of curiosity. Thunderball. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Um, and it came out twenty years before it, nearly twenty years. Yeah, like eighteen or something. And um, it's superior in almost every way, mm. movie wise, I think. And um, oh, between these two, um, I'm going to to defend Fiona. Oh, yes, you get Fiona. And you got uh, Fatima. Yes, okay. I can work uh, with that. So, like, uh, Luciana Paluzzi. Fiona has always been one of my favorite Bond girls. I know. Villainess <laughs> or not. Um, I, I've always loved her. Even even aside from, like, her being gorgeous and, like, her, her dresses and, like, the boa that she has on and everything, she's very, like, cunning, smart character very devious like she she's like the way she stares at connery in some of the scenes like either with uh maliciousness and evil in her eyes like she just caught him or like gonna seduce him you yeah. know she just getting out of the bathtub and just walked right over to him um i i think she she she's like a true highlight in that movie yeah like just a, a standout agree. yeah standout character and um one of the things i always liked about her too was her and connery there's so many great little scenes and dialogue between them yeah you know like her in the bathtub and he said give me something to wear he just hands yeah hands her the shoes best one of the uh, best moments if wonderful after like getting out of the car driving really fast you know i hope my driving didn't uh, scare you mr bond he says oh, i've always been a nervous passenger <laughs> like, oh well some men just don't like to be driven he says, no, some men just don't like to be taken for a ride. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Like, really great Do you, do you fly here often? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, really great, great little lines. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the final death scene of hers. Like, so well done. Like, Bond is on the run. He seems trapped. You know, then pulls her up on the dance floor. And then, like, it's that great edited sequence of, like, you know, the drums getting faster. And, like, Bond, you know, Connery trying to figure out, like, wh what to do. Whips her around. The gun goes like right in her back. You know, yeah, the bullet. Great death scene too. Yeah, One yeah. He says, "Oh, you, you, my mind of my friend sister went out. She's dead." Yeah, you know, like. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fiona, I I am a Fiona fan. 
I yeah. love Fiona. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, I know. The motorcycle, and also, I'll mention the motorcycle moment. She takes the helmet off with the, the hair. I mean, like, gorgeous looking, like, d deadly and gorgeous, you know? Yeah. I agree. It's they're they're both really strong characters. I think that's the one thing Never Say Never Again got uh, has got going for it. It's is is Fatima Blush. I think it's one of the strongest elements to Never Say Never Again to a very, you know, uh, mediocre, weak Bond film in general. But I think Fatima Blush is a highlight to it, and I think in my um, top ten henchmen video i included both uh, fiona volpe and fatima blush in there in the top 10 henchmen i think fiona volpe i ranked higher but it's mostly because fiona volpe is like the the archetype of the femme fatales so he's, she's clearly the more iconic one fiona but i think i said in my never say never again review like Fatima Blush, she's so good. She's almost, dare I say, even better than the original. I think I've said that in, wow. in my review. And I could still argue for that because I think what Fatima has got for it is like she's so over the top. She's almost like the, the precursor to Xenia on the top in some way. She's like, I think maybe yeah, during GoldenEye, they, they may have looked, looked at her because Xenia on the top is probably my favorite henchwoman, henchmen in the series in general. I think I ranked her at number one. But I think she has a lot of elements that, that they got from Fatima Blush. And like you said, with, with Fiona and, and uh, Fiona Volpe and Connery have a lot of good moments. So do Fatima Blush and Connery in, in Never Say Never Again. I always like the bit where um, where she's introduced, you know, where she, where she comes uh, on the water skis to... Oh. And mm -hmm. it's like, uh, oh, I made you all wet. Oh, don't worry, my martini is still dry. You know, the, right, right. <laughs> I'm still waiting for for me to say that line in real life at some point. It still hasn't happened. <laughs> but it's it's one of the best moments in the and and also just like Fiona Volpe, she also has the amazing death scene with with the pen and the over the top of making her say to Bond, you know, that she was the best sex she's ever had. You know, and Bond is forced to say it, and then he goes, well. Uh, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> there was this girl in Philadelphia, you know. Yeah, that's a great, great one. scene as well. That's a good one. And it's also the the snake, the the really over the top clothing. The, um, uh, I think there's there's even that weird sex scene. It's one of the weirdest in the series, though, where yeah. you see the door opening and then you see her, you know. Oh, okay, yeah, in, the, in boat. the boat. In the boat, that's kind of weird, but it it does again. That does. Um, remind me of Xenia on the top. Like she's she's this wild creature almost, like this this over the top henchwoman. So, so she's definitely not vanilla, so to speak. The the personality is there, and compared to all the other characters in Never Say Never Again, she's clearly the strongest. You know who else? The who else, You know yeah. the, the the Largo. What's his name? Class Hound, Brown Howder or something. You know who I mean. Yeah, not not as good as, as the, Emilio Lago from Thunderball. Um, I can see why they casted Max Van Zero as Blofeld. He could have been really good, but he really he, was. He's uh, so forgettable like, in that movie. Yeah. He doesn't really like when he when Max Van Zero died recently. Yeah, uh, I saw like oh yeah, Blo Blofeld that uh, people mentioned. I said like, oh yeah, that's right, he did buy, yeah, play yeah. both Blofeld. And he's so see, uh, has like such why. light screen. Time, right? Yeah. Because I know, I think Connery wanted him, and I can uh -huh. I can see that that he could have had it, but you know, in in his defense, there was barely any anything to work with. You yeah. know. It was like two little scenes, like any like uh, spe Just in matters of death. Spectre, yeah, it's set up completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's all very small scale, especially compared to Fundable. So. M as well, very weak. Um, I like the new Q, the, the Q they they take they I, have. The, I forgot I, the actor's I, name. But. Yeah, I agree with you on that. He's kind of amusing. It's a different he, he, different yeah. take on him. So they do have that, but other than that, you know, let's face it, Never Say Never Again is not really a strong Bond film, but Fatima Blush and Connery, in a way, make it worthwhile, I think, to at least give it... A, I, I think she shines. She, she's, she did a great job acting in, the, in this film. I can't really point like a scene like, oh, 
here she's she, 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 she's weak or here she she could have done she's over the top she's out there and she she went all out for it That's yeah I, I i would I, I would say yeah she she does seem like she's really enjoying playing evil and is just not holding back at all throughout like as soon as she shows up with the clothes and her attitude and some yeah. of her lines like i remember like he he tells her he said okay you could go kill bond and she's running down the stairs she starts taking the, down her hair and everything like she's a wild cat on a rampage now like she's gonna she gets to kill bond yeah um but she she but in some ways like i always thought of her as like a little too campy in a way it's just hmm. like a little it's a little too over the top it's like she's so exaggerated in comparison to fiona who like i could see okay they would trust her as this uh reliable assassin and she 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 knows how to handle the situations and all this right. stuff uh fatima she just seems like 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 a crazed cat on the loose almost like yeah. she, she, you don't know what to expect like that she might get the job done but she she could get a little crazy like throwing the snake in the in the guy's car and stuff like exactly, that like yeah. she'll get the job done but she, on her i guess like on her own wild terms like i don't know if i would trust her with that uh, no, i i might. completely agree with that assessment but i think that's that adds color to the film yeah it it, it, it does it adds entertainment i could see yeah and and um, the film needed that too <laughs> it, it it is a very dry film like a very I don't know. There's something always weird about Never Say Never. It's a lot of those scenes, like people like complain about License to Kill looking cheap. There's a lot of like sets in Never Say Never yeah. Again that just look yeah. really like they they filmed it in like I don't know a closet or like yeah. like just a it, blank it, room. You, the experience of me always watching it is is you it you, it just feels like in every scene like this is not eon you know you, it, it's always clear in your mind like i'm not watching an eon bond film you know yeah the the, the, the music is off um it, it just you know immediately from the start instead of a gun barrel you get this really bad song with, with the lettering showing up because i i think i prefer never say never again over diamonds are forever though not in the music but it, it's hmm. uh, it's i i do find it more entertaining but other than that, it's still a very weak film. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's that, it's, and it's there, so much of it is is face palming and never say never again. Like, Fundable is, for for instance, the scene where in Fundable where Bond has to mention to Domino that that her brother died. Right. And, and you have the beach scene, and it gets emotional. You know, he, he puts on his sunglasses to hide his. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then, fast forward to never say never again and. And you get the the ballroom dance, and it's like dance. Your brother's dead. Your brother's dead. <laughs> it's just like and you, it, 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 <laughs> dance. Just, all right, perfect moment to mention that one, Bond. It, it's keep dancing. <laughs> and it's 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 to me, it's so. And odd. It, it's funny, like if you compare it, he's sympathetic to Domino and like Thunderball and all this stuff. Meanwhile, and never say never again. He's basically feeling up Kim Basinger on like the massage table and stuff, yeah. and it, like you know, it's hard to yeah. like say, "Oh, Bond is he's he's really caring for this woman. He's he wants to help her." Yeah, while he's yeah, like yeah. grabbing he's like her. Like an old pervert. <laughs> yeah. you have a, oh, and he has a funny line in there, like you have a what was it, some severe stress in the upper vertebra <laughs> or something. What, what's the no no? I say it wrong. I had uh, I wish I looked this up beforehand, but you uh, know the line I'm talking about. It's I, I, I used I to like, quote that a lot. <laughs> I know, like she says, like, oh, can you go lower? And he says, yeah. oh, that feels good. Yeah, it certainly does. And meanwhile, I was like, does. wow, this guy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He must have been felt embarrassed doing that. I would think. Jesus. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? But um, but Fatima. One thing about Fatima and Connery paired up, I always thought of like a similarity between that pairing and Roger Moore and Grace Jones. Sort of like they cast like a younger wilder uh woman to like f to pair them up with like these older bonds in a way to almost mm -hmm. like counteract a little yeah. bit of like you know the age or or something but yeah, that's an interesting yeah. interesting uh, comparison yeah but, uh, but to me to me mayday is um 
it's like creepy as hell and and like it's like cringe cringe wordy when when c and roger uh you know uh uh hit the sheets yeah but yeah. but with with uh barbara carrara at least she's very hot it's uh, it, but i could see the comparison yeah they're both they're similar types of henchwomen. And that's another thing. Maybe maybe with Grace Jones, they took some inspiration from Fatima Blush, too. Because that came, like, two years after. Yeah. Because uh, hmm. exactly. other than... Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Other than Fiona, you don't really have femme that fatale. much over-the-top femme fatales until Never Say Never Again. You, you have Naomi in The Spy Who Loved Me, which doesn't get that much screen time. Then you have um Good then you have Be Be Bambi and Thumper in Diamonds, but yeah. Uh, small roles. Um yeah, the major one was yeah on the top. Yeah, so it wasn't until then. And I think Fatima definitely had some influence, although Eon would probably never uh admit it. But but I, I think they may have, she may have had some influence on them in in what she did with the with the role. And Craig, is he going to get like a good femme fatale? Well, I was hoping like... Anna Anna the Armas could be the, but I think she's another good girl. I think we won't get get another one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, oh, making like a woman uh, a bad character. Why do you have to make all women bad? She should be a positive role yeah. model for. Yeah, well, we uh, haven't had we haven't had a proper bat one for a long time. Yeah, I think uh, Miranda Frost was the last one. Oh, okay. God, I forgot about her. Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have the chief chick in Casino, but that's not doesn't really count. You you could argue that you know Monica Bellucci's character was on the the side of the bad guys, but you know she got. They they really water him down in comparison to to Fiona yeah. and uh, Fatima. Exactly, it's just straight yeah. out evil and gonna I'm gonna kill I'm gonna have sex with him. Black widow women, like exactly, you know, and, kill, and usually yeah, they're very and, good. Uh, yeah, sex like, and like death. Grace, that's what they're about. Exactly, Grace Jones as well. Creepy as hell, but she, she's a good character. I mean, memorable as hell. So was uh, Zenia on the top. Well, uh, I think in this discussion. Um, I could objectively, I would like I said, I ranked them too, and I ranked Fiona over for Tima. But I think one of the strengths that Fiona Volpe has is she, she was the archetype, she's the first of her kind, so to speak, uh, and she's the more memorable and iconic one. And you know, for Tima Blush, happens to star in an unofficial Bond film. But I think, had she been part of the official series, she would have been much more beloved, uh, I think. Yeah, you make them. You bring up some good arguments. You you bring up some good positives about her. Like some of some of the stuff about her, like kind of, it would just tur turn me off. Like when she's she's wearing like a pirate outfit, yeah. almost like pirate pants and stuff. Like some of the like there's the, the no wardrobe. real reason for her to. I'm like dress that way. Yeah, like I'm like it, it's not as classy as like Fiona in in her dresses or like when she walks in and. Um, right. The big hat. That, that's that's one one moment I I, I like is when um, she she walks into um, Martine Beswick. Yeah, yeah, Paula. Yeah. She she walks in on Paula and with the hat and like immediately you know okay she Paula's going to be dead and yeah. never say never again. They have the Paula stand in and she ends up dead in the in the waterbed. Yeah. She is like. She doesn't get any, barely any mention, any screen time. You, you barely see her face. There's like no setup to this character well, and like the death. Like it's, I, I it's joked strange. about that in my my recap too. It's like, um, what's her name of the Pola equivalent in uh, in Never Say Never Again? Um, uh, uh, they mention it. I remember he mentions it to Felix. Because uh, in my they... recap, I, I was like, uh, and then it's revealed that that she is dead, and you're like. Oh no! Wait, who was she again? Oh yeah, right, the, right. The whole, uh, that's the joke I made about it in my my recap. It's yeah, like, it's oh, true. Oh, this, she she died. Or who who is it? And she she only shows up in the airport scene, but pretty much. Yeah, Felix. it's it's kind of strange. I at forgot, least like I forgot yeah, her name now. At least like Paula, like I knew who it was. Like when we see her dead, we we know who she was. That kind yeah. of sees like in the but like yeah, the one in the waterbed. It's like almost like barely. Like I I didn't even glance at. It. Like it didn't even get. 
She didn't barely yeah. got any screen time to like establish her. Yeah, exactly. It's it's almost like they put that scene in because okay, this is what the story is. Yeah. And like they didn't even bother like establishing it. Yeah. So we got to get to the motorcycle chase. Forget. Don't worry about her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horrible movie. Uh, um. So like I I still stand by it. again. Fiona is like still one of my top top favorite Bond yeah, girls. No. Villainous, good, good girl, bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I would, and I would agree. I think that's the the, the thing with this this uh, episode. I could argue for both sides. I think they're yeah. both strong actresses in in their roles, and they both did a good job. With and uh, Viona has the upper hand for being more memorable and and being in the official series. But um, they're both uh, they're both good and they're both hot. So would you? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say uh, Fiona is a standout character in a great movie and Fatima is a great character in a so-so movie? Yeah, that sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could, I could go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Do you like my work and would you like to help this channel grow? Well, consider becoming part of the exclusive DBF community and help support my channel. What is the DBF community? Well, it's the community over at my Patreon page made for the biggest fans of my channel. Why did I create this community? Well, you see, every average project you see on here takes me roughly 30 to 40 hours to produce and upon uploading it, all revenue is pretty much taken away immediately by MGM or other film studios, unfairly as it goes against the fair use policies. So that's why I'm always looking for support and set up this community on Patreon for the biggest diehard fans of my work. I am a believer that those who support me should be rewarded with a ton of perks like getting two weeks early access to all my latest videos, receiving a personal thank you video from me. I will also send you my custom made Blu-ray covers that you can print out and put in empty Blu-ray boxes and you get exclusive access to the supporters discord server where you can chat with me and fellow Bond fans whenever you like. And everybody that supports me also builds towards new goals for the channel's future. All these perks come for a little $3 a month. All support is appreciated immensely. Thanks a lot guys.